Zombies. Probably very smelly, bad tempered and always hungry. What maybe sounds like a description of what EA thinks their customers are like, gets real frightening with the secret ingredient of a cannibalistic hunger for the living. Who doesn't enjoy a little zombie apocalypse atmosphere every once in a while? I mean this year has been bad enough, don't need people biting my feet while grocery shopping. But still. I went on a zombie movie binge with my girlfriend recently over the course of October. We kinda watched the whole world turn into a zombie apocalypse in a way. We watched from like different perspectives of different countries which was kinda interesting. So first off we watched 28 days later which uh, zombified Great Britain. and. Yeah, there's a scene in which a guy gets infected stupidly by a blood droplet from a crow. He could have just left that bird alone. What a dumbass. Get out of it. Next up was Hashtag Alive, a Korean zombie movie. That one was pretty damn awesome. Huge recommendation, even though um, it's only subtitled. But, uh, well, in this movie, uh, you kind of get really afraid of apartment blocks. I mean, that shit's fucking scary. Watching the movie Cargo, starring Martin Freeman, had one of the most amazing scenes I have ever witnessed, ever. There, there is a scene in which a child and a toddler ride a zombified Martin Freeman into battle. That, that, that fucking happened. They were all really enjoyable movies, which made me wonder at one point, what if zombies, but in the past, and then it hit me. There's something I was waiting to get, something I was hoping it released this year. I, I wanted to get my hands on that thing. So where the fuck is my Red Dead Redemption Undead Nightmare 2? Don't get me wrong. Red Dead Redemption is incredible and the second one I enjoyed a whole bunch really great I like the ending is just one of the best things ever and yeah I, I kind of was waiting for my light-hearted zombie spin-off which always brought so much joy to me when it released the first time so, where the hell is the second one? Come on, Rockstar. What? A Halloween online event? You got to be fucking kidding me. God damn it, Rockstar. Who asked for this? I did. Alright. First things first. A little background on the time Rockstar produced probably the best expansion pack ever made, in my opinion. Remember me talking about zombie movies? Yeah. In the realm of video games, the undead hordes were so popular in the early 2010s that people got really fed up with everyone's favorite brain munchers. 
Walking Dead, Left 4 Dead, Last of Us, Dead Island, Dying Light. The list goes on and on and on and on. Uh, oh, oh, oh no! Uh, no! Ah, 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 no! Ah, 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 You get the gists. Zombies fucking everywhere. But what if you take something that has no zombies whatsoever in it and has already a great cast of established characters and throw them into a full-blown zombie apocalypse? Uh, not you. This happens. They went ahead and answered the most important question ever asked by mankind. What if cowboy game, but with zombies? Thanks, Rockstar. Now do it for the second game, goddammit. John Marston had it a little rough. His family was held hostage by the Pinkertons, and he was being forced to kill a lot of his former friends and members of the Vandalin gang he once called family, in a way. We all know John didn't have much time with his family in the original game, and that is the perfect space to fit in one insane spin-off that made an incredible game even better without hurting the main story at all. Well... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Poor kid. On a stormy night, the Marston family just chilled on their farm. After months away, John Marston has returned to his loved ones. When suddenly everyone's favorite old bastard uncle happens to look a little bloody. You okay, old man? You don't look so good. and bursts into the master bedroom. After Abigail gets bitten by uncle, John shows the old man his double barrel shotgun up close. Of course, his wife and son get infected, and our cowboy handles the crazed Marstons by tying them up and vows to find a cure for his loved ones. <laughs> Now, I don't know what the hell's gotten into you sick, crazy bastards, or what I've done to you, but I'm going to get help. Stay calm. As calm as you can, seeing as both of you seem to have gotten a little excited. Probably just a fever. Jack, be kind to your mother. Abigail, teach the boy right from wrong. Both of you, stop biting chunks out of people. I'll be back as soon as I can. From then on, you visit all the Red Dead landmarks, but the undead are already everywhere. And ammo is scarce and needs to be collected from corpses. Dispatching the zombies is possible only by destroying their brains or burning them. Classic. The atmosphere changed a lot between the original game and the spin-off. Instead of the more saturated colors, everything is very drab and dark looking as long as zombies are around, buildings are on fire and corpses litter the streets, and the music is reflecting the new horror theme really well. John discovers that not only the living become undead, even people who died years ago rise from their graves suddenly and start attacking the living. So John clears out graveyards by burning the coffins and shoots every creature who is dumb enough to stand in his way. Using Red Dead's dead eye bullet time mode can lead to epic moments of carnage and head explosions. Constant outnumbered and low on ammo is what you have to deal with in this game. The enemies can easily overpower you, and even the animal population not only got zombified as well, but also quite more deadly than usual. Overall, making a horror spin-off out of Red Dead was a fantastic idea, 
and I was really glad they made it a standalone box title as well. Cause back in the day when it released, I had no broadband internet available, and it took 5 more years to finally get decent internet speed to download DLC and expansions the like. In Undead Nightmare, Marston's quest to find a cure for his family gets filled with wacky characters and lots of humoristic interactions with the zombies. They are sprinkled in every once in a while to lighten the mood a bit, and some cutscenes are downright hilarious. Hey mister. Hey part. You seen a couple deputies nearby? Marshall's boys. Jonah and Eli. Are they Jews, mister? They sound like Jews. I don't know. Why? Why? <laughs> This whole thing is nothing but a Jewish plot. You do know that, don't you? I find that highly unlikely, amigo. Well, I don't like Jews. Or colored folk. Or natives, now that you mention it. Well, you're a nice, kind-hearted man to meet in a time of trouble. Kind does not come into it. Why? What are you talking about? Why? <laughs> I bet you like Catholics. I can't stand them neither, nor women, Fabians, Socialists, Homosexuals, Asians, or British. Between them, they've ruined this country, ruined it. It was a good country once. Now people are eating each other, and it's all the fault of the Jewish, British, Catholic, Homosexual elite and their ideas. Well, I, for one, won't stand for it. Have you ever met a Jewish person? <laughs> Thankfully not. Or a uh, British Catholic homosexual? Not in my store. Oh, I, I get it. I see you acting clever. Well, let me tell you this. The Jews killed Lincoln. That's why there is a triangle on the money. And they run Europe like one of them Arabian harems. Now they've sent this here plague to kill all us decent folk. Yep. You, sir, are truly a remarkable fella. Thank you kindly. I must say, it's a rare pleasure to meet someone with such a grasp on human history. You take care of yourself. I'd hate to see you get savaged by someone and watch the life force drain from your hate-filled body. Uh, hey, hold on there. Why don't you join me in my fight, sir? It's not too late. I fear it is for me. Then I will fight them alone. All of them! America is the land of the free! And that means free to people like me, Herbert Moon! Absolutely. Oh, oh no, no! no. One amazing zombie romp, worth playing even 10 years later. Graphics still hold up and look really good optimized on an Xbox One and probably look still great on a PS3 or Xbox 360. To be fair, I had a couple of weird bugs happen and there was this strange reoccurring one that made all the people in the game appear headless, except for spook reasons, probably, but still really weird and unexpected. Also, after playing Red Dead 2 and replaying this, I noticed how clunky the controls often are. Red Dead 2 is not really a great controlling game, to be fair, but it still makes changes and adjustments to the controls that makes it a lot more playable than this one here. It's not downright bad or anything, but still very noticeable. Obviously, older games can't just have the improvements of the sequel, but I still have to mention it, because the controls kinda dampened my enjoyment a bit. Other than that, there isn't much to complain about. If you like zombies and cowboys a lot, and wish those two would finally kiss, then open your damn eyes and look at your 10 year old son. And call yourself uncle. Not that uncle, he's dead. So if you're still unsure what to play this Halloween, maybe hop on ye old Xbox store or dust off your 360 or PS3 and give this one a go.
and Ride Rockstar one angry ladder how much he wanted a sequel to this, and they can shove their online Halloween event up their own pumpkin. Okay, thanks. Love ya. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe and tell me if you played this game yourself at one point. I'm gonna go get cozy and watch a couple of more zombie movies probably. And think about the scene where two kids rode zombie Martin Freeman through Australia. Jesus Christ.